sometimes you're fortunate enough to have neighbors who aren't interested in your daily business. They don't snoop, they don't peer through your curtains to spy on you, and they generally leave you in peace. That is if you're lucky. But there are some neighbors who have an uncanny knack for hearing everything that goes on in your house at all times of the day and night, whether you like it or not. This can be extremely annoying, but sometimes it can turn out to be absolutely hilarious. What if you were to hear a strange noise coming from your neighbor's house or apartment? It's difficult to know if someone is in trouble or is a TV. Well, see what these neighbors did when they heard a strange noise coming from the next door. Once, a quiet day in December, a man was working on his car in his driveway. It was peaceful in the street where he lived and he was going about his day with no interruptions. He had lived in his house for several years and loved being there. He and his wife had chosen the area after careful consideration. The house was located in the city of Lake Worth Beach, Florida. Lake Worth Beach is now a flourishing city with a friendly community. It's known for its antique stores, restaurants, art galleries, and music venues. Jason Sprague and his wife, 25 years, Gia, moved to this up-and-coming city several years ago and had not encountered a problem since they had arrived. But on this quiet afternoon in late December, Jason's neighbor were concerned about the noises coming from Jason and Gia's house. They didn't hesitate to pick up the phone to do what they believed to be the right thing. Looking back on it now, perhaps, they would have made a different judgment call. According to the neighbors, they were alarmed to hear a voice repeatedly calling for help. As they peered out from their front porch, the screams seemed to be coming from where Jason was quietly working on Gia's silver mini. The cries sounded panicked and distraught and seemed to be coming from a woman. Over and over again, the woman was pleading to be saved. The neighbors could see that Jason seemed obvious to her voice. He was placidly working on the car and did not react at all. Surely he could hear the woman's cries. Why wasn't he doing anything? As the neighbors walked out onto their lawn, they could make out the words she was screaming and it was horrifying. Help, help, let me out! It was being said over and over again, but Jason did nothing. He seemed totally unaware of the woman's plight. It was more than this his neighbor could stand, so they rushed back into the house and grabbed their phone. The voice was slightly muffled, so they didn't know if it was a child or an adult. All they knew was that someone definitely needed saving and it was their civic duty to call 911. In their minds, this was a matter of the police. They dialed the number and explained that they could hear cries and pleas for help coming from Jason's house and most likely it was a young woman in danger. Within minutes, the neighbors were relieved to see a couple of police cars appear in the street. The uniformed officers cautiously approached Jason's house and walked up the driveway, calling out their presence. Jason looked up from the car and was shocked to see four cops heading his way. There was a look of confusion and bewilderment on his face as they made their way even closer to him. He had no idea why they all looked so serious and why they were glaring at him so intently. He began to feel very nervous. Just a moment ago, Jason had been lost in his thoughts and the work he was doing. He hadn't heard the police cars approach his house and the sight of them walking onto his property had him genuinely scared. He was concerned about his family and the blood drained from his face. Had his wife Gia been hurt in an accident? Or was his relatives in danger? All kinds of thoughts raced through his mind and he was filled with worry and dread. He had no idea why they were there and nervously asked what was wrong. He found it hard to breathe as he waited for one of them to reply. The police officers at the scene could see that Jason was worried by their presence. He calmly explained to them that they had been called by a worried neighbor who had heard some cries for help coming from his house. It was their duty to investigate immediately to make sure that no one was in danger. Jason looked perplexed as he listened to the police explain why they had been called out. His mind was racing as he heard the explanation, but he was completely baffled. So long Gia and the rest of his family were safe, he was going to help the police as much as he could. Jason had security cameras installed around his house in case of intruders, so the motion sensor cameras were recording the whole incident. It would later be uploaded onto YouTube and be watched by millions. Jason knew that no one else was in the house as Gia had gone out for the day. To the best of his knowledge, there was no one in danger, despite what the police were telling him. The police informed him that they would need to find the source of the screaming. Just a few minutes ago, he calmly fixed the brakes on his wife's car and he was now being questioned about the cries for help that were seemingly coming from inside his house. He wanted to put the deputies' minds at rest as quickly as possible. 
He knew that no one needed saving, and he wanted to ease the officer's concerns. As the police explained everything to him, Jason told him that the cries for help were definitely not coming from a woman being held captive. There was no one inside his house being held against their will. He asked the bewildered police to let him go into his backyard to prove that he was telling the truth. Jason wanted to go to the source of the noise and solve the mystery for the police and his concerned neighbors. There was nothing to be alarmed about and he asked for permission to prove that he shouldn't be seen as a suspect in the crime. Jason went to retrieve the screamer. I'll bring the screamer out for you, Jason said. The officers didn't have to wait for long to see why Jason was confident that no one was in peril. Jason seemed much more relaxed now that he had worked out who the neighbors had been calling about, and he wanted to solve the mystery for the police. Everyone in uniform was eager to meet this screaming woman and check on her welfare so they gave Jason the permission to head to the backyard. He even had a smile on his face. After a brief moment, Jason returned to the driveway, but he wasn't alone. He had a bird perched on his hand. But this was no ordinary bird. This bright green and yellow bird was over four decades old and was a very intelligent creature. As he approached the police, who were waiting for a valuable explanation, their faces changed completely, going from datation to astonishment. A Rambo is quite a rare breed of parrot known as yellow-napped Amazon parrot. He's extremely friendly and is considered to be a family member. Having been in Jason's life for 40 years, he is usually a well-behaved bird, but Jason was now regretting teaching Rambo how to say certain words and phrases. When Jason was a young boy, he had been thrilled when Rambo became part of the family. Jason formed a close bond with the bird and thought it would be funny to teach Rambo some funny phrases. Little did he know that four decades later, this would almost get him arrested. When he was a youngster, Jason thought it would be amusing to teach Rambo some phrases to mess with his parents. Ever after ever, Jason would recite the same words over and over again until Rambo started to copy him. Jason thought this was hilarious and Rambo would get rewarded with treats whenever he successfully repeated the phrases back to the elated boy. Over the years, Rambo learned more and more phrases from the mischievous teenager, but the ones that he pronounced the best were, help and let me out. Jason was proud of what he had taught Rambo and in turn, Rambo loved receiving pats on his head as well as his favorite treats. This Amazon parrot was proudly yelling out, help and let me out, whenever he was in the mood. Jason and his friends thought it was hysterical. Four decades later, Jason is oblivious to the most of what Rambo calls out as he had heard it so many times before. It doesn't even register with him anymore and the rest of the family reacts the same way to Rambo speaking. Jason's wife, Chia, also doesn't even hear it anymore. Neither of them considers the things that Rambo says to be bothersome to them, but looking back at it now, these phrases could be of some concern to the others hearing it for the first time. As the policemen took in what they were seeing and what Jason was saying, they all relaxed and instantly felt calmer, but they needed proof that Rambo was indeed that was screaming. So they asked Jason to get the parrot to talk. It was the only way to prove that Rambo was mistakenly thought to be a woman in peril. Jason looked at his beloved pet and asked Rambo to speak to the policeman. At first, Rambo was shy. The bird wasn't used to being brought off his perch in the garden and put in front of strangers. He stayed resolutely quiet. Finally, the parrot seemed ready to have a chat with the strangers in this driveway. He started with the friendly, hello, before moving on to some of the other sentences in his repertoire. The voice coming out of the bird's mouth definitely sounded like a woman. Jason asked Rambo to repeat the two phrases that had started off all this drama. Jason was regretting teaching his pet how to say them all those years ago, but he was starting to see the funny side of it too. He hoped the officers would feel the same way when Rambo would eventually yell it out. Sure enough, Rambo shrieked, help, help, let me out, to the officers. It was a verbatim match of the words heard by Jason's neighbor. Jason was no longer a suspect in a kidnapping case and Rambo most definitely wasn't a female in danger. Rambo loves chatting to himself and even amuses himself with singing songs too. As he was changing the tire on Gia's car, Jason had completely blocked out Rambo's voice. Thankfully, everyone at the scene could see the funny side of the situation and even though it was a waste of police time, they were glad to know that no one was in any kind of danger. No charges were filed, but Jason could totally see why his neighbors had been alarmed by the words of Rambo. She thought it was a girl being thrown into a pool as it kept going on and on. She decided she could call the police, is what his neighbors said, according to Jason. He might have done the same in a similar situation. He doesn't blame her at all for calling the police. 
Jason watches the police leave and then heads out for a house visit with Rambo in tow. Once the police had left Jason's house, they reported back to the neighbor about the source of the yelling and that it had been a simple misunderstanding. The officers then returned to the station to fill in the necessary paperwork. Jason knew that he needed to do as soon as he finished working on the car. Once he put on the tire back onto Gia's car, he took a stroll around the block with Rambo on his shoulder. He headed to the concerned neighbor's house and rang the doorbell. As soon as the woman opened the door, Jason introduced himself and his talkative parrot. Having already been told about Rambo by the police officers, Jason's neighbors had a big grin on their face and was able to laugh with Jason about the 911 call. Rambo had a little chat with the woman too, repeating some of his classic phrases and cherry songs. Jason knew that his neighbor did the right thing by calling the police. Likewise, the worried neighbors were very relieved to learn that no one was drowning or being held against their will. It was just a chatty parrot keeping itself amused in the sunshine.